All right, so we are not working on this car, but it's showing. Uh, I made room in my garage. I can actually fit this and park it in the garage, so that's cool. Picked up a lawnmower, doing adult things. Um, we're back to working on the 79 Corvette. Today we're changing out the master and the brake booster. Um, supposedly it should just be like four bolts. I think four on this side, four on that side. We'll see. Um, I've never done a brake booster or a master, so we'll see. Um, I know I'll, I'm gonna have to lay inside. I might have to take the seat out, which won't be the worst thing. Uh, I'm gonna start with the easy thing. I already drained the fluid out of the master cylinder. Um, I did that right at the very beginning of the series. Um, so now I'm just gonna take the, the lines off the master and just see if I can pull it out, see if that's how it works. So I got the two bolts loose. Uh, the back one is already off. This one is, you can see, kind of right here. Uh, you need a wrench to get to them. It's some size in between 916 and 5 8. I, I don't know what size that is. I don't have it. But a 15 uh, metric wrench worked. So, yeah. <laughs> Uh, it might have been a 916 and then just the rust kind of mushroomed it out a little bigger to a 15. But I don't know what standard size is a 15 metric equivalent. So I'm going to take this off and then put this on my table out of the way. And be careful you don't get any brake fluid on your paint. So here is the old master cylinder. As you can see it is yucky. You can actually see a bit of fluid back here. Um, yeah, you can tell it's wet back here, so it might have actually been leaking out of the cap. That might have been more reasonable, because I don't really see a seal back here. I, I'm not too familiar with master cylinders, but yeah. So not too bad to take off. Um, once you get the two nuts off, it just slides out, so nothing crazy or anything like that. Uh, looks like you can see a little bit of, I think that's brake fluid back here. I think that's what's causing all this rust stuff. Uh, it's definitely wet, so that's the issue. Uh, you can see sticking out of the hole is the plunger that, that actually moves and presses the brakes down with when your pedal presses. Um, you can see how corroded the, the threads were on the studs, so thankfully they didn't break. I mean, it wouldn't matter because I'm replacing the booster, but... Thankfully, it made <laughs> extracting those nuts easy. <laughs> Alright, so we gotta figure out how to pull this out, and I think it's just four bolts on the inside. Alright, we are upside down underneath the dash. I just got the four bolts out and the pin that holds it to the brake pedal. Uh, I won't, there's no way I can show you. Uh, I can't, I can hardly see them myself. So if you get positioned just right, you can see three of the four pins. And the very fourth one is super hidden, especially if you have a the four speed with the clutch pedal. Man. So people recommend to take this out. Uh, this was already out on mine. You can fit an extension through there, like that, if you need to. Um, other people have recommended pulling out the, the gauges. Um, I don't know if that would help. It might. Really don't know. Um, or the people say drop the steering column. So I just did it. It's possible to do it without dropping the steering column or pulling the gauges, but I, I'm sure it would help if you pulled the steering column, but that's a whole lot more work, <laughs> clearly. So, um, but the way it works is I won't be able to show you, so I'll just point. There's, there's going to be four bolts, two on this side, two on this side. The bottom two, pretty easy. Uh, the right two are the easiest. This one, you have to get creative with your extensions and maybe use a universal joint like I had to. But the top one, that one, you just can't see, especially if you have a clutch pedal you can't see it at all. If you position your head just right, you can see the last two threads of the stud, but that's it. So it's really hard to fit your fingers in there. 
I'm sure it's going to be a nightmare to put a nut back on when I get it all into place. But I'd imagine if you didn't have a clutch pedal, it would be so much easier. People say this should take maybe 30 minutes. I, I don't even, I don't see how that's even possible with the clutch pedal. You can't see anything. This was a lot of work. Um, yeah, so if you're doing this, <laughs> prepare yourself for a lot of work because if you have a fourth speed, this is a struggle. If you have automatic, then you don't have that clutch pedal, you should be fine with just a bunch of extensions and uh, use a universal joint. And then also there's the pin that holds it into the brake pedal. So it just slides in and then there's, there's a this. this. This clip locks it in place so the clip's really easy to just pry off with the screwdriver. And then I had to work this out with a pry bar and eventually I got some some of these plier things back there to just yank it out and it's a struggle but nowhere near as that top fourth bolt. So this took almost three hours just to remove it just because I had no idea where that top fourth bolt was and once I finally got it I could barely fit the right amount of extensions or universal joints to just get the right angle to even twist it out. Um, so we already saw this side. This side is the, the nasty side. Um, this is the whole reason why I'm replacing it. Uh, purely cosmetic. Uh, it, it functions fine. The master did need to be replaced because it was leaking. Alright, so this is my setup to bench bleed the master cylinder. Uh, the master cylinder uh, came with the little tubes and fittings to do it, so we're going to give it a shot. Um, the, the fittings here, the plastic fittings that just push in, um, kind of worry me a bit, like they're going to start leaking, so I'm keeping a good eye on that. Uh, but you want to make sure it's level, or at least as close to level as you can, so downloaded this app, and uh, I don't have it all the way on, so it's a little off, but uh, you can trust me, it's about as level as I can get for not having a vice. And so I just got to push the cylinder in here. I'm going to have to use two hands and support it, so let me set up the camera. Alright, so let's give this a shot. So I'm just watching for air bubbles to come out. I don't really know where I'm supposed to support, but... There we go. You gotta press kind of hard. And you want to make sure the tubes are fully submerged. Oh, you gotta really press hard. <laughs> Holy. I want to make sure I'm not gonna damage the little piston thing. It definitely seems like there's a little bit of proportioning built into the master cylinder. So the front reservoir goes first and then the rear. So originally I was going to just mount it to the vehicle, have someone press the brakes, and then use your fingers and you just plug the system up and all the air bubbles will go to the top. Almost done. Okay, so the top, or the front reservoir is clean now. Out of, free of air bubbles I should say. The rear one still has a little bit to go. Okay, that's good. I'll just do it a couple more times just to be certain because it doesn't hurt. Yeah, 
Okay. So that will make bleeding the four brakes so much easier. That's why they tell you to bleed the master cylinder. Um, and so brake fluid's hydrophobic, I think that's what it's called, where it absorbs water. So I want to cap this up and seal the system off so I don't waste brake fluid. And yeah, so I'm going to actually plug these caps in. And this should do the trick to prevent it from leaking out. So we're going to do a hot swap real quick. Alright, hot swap time. So, uh, you don't have to worry about air getting introduced, and if there is, it's only going to be a little bit, so it will come out immediately once you start bleeding the brakes, since you have to do that anyways. Come on. sure the seal holds. So I lost a little bit of brake fluid, no big deal, just made a little bit of a mess. You can't see it. Perfect. Okay, we'll put the cap on. That's a DIY way to bleed the master cylinder yourself without the special tool, even though they gave you the special tool. So I should say without having a, a vice. Alright, well, let's put this on now. And yep, that's about it. I don't have the, I don't know what these are called, retainer things. Um, I don't have these in all the way, and I'm not going to, because it seems like the only way to do it is to scratch up the paint. So I'm going to try to minimize uh, the scratching of the paint, or the finish on here. So. Alright, got it installed. I took the clips off just, just to get them out of the way. Um, as you can see, I already did mark up the lid a little bit. Ah. There must be a special way to do it, and I just don't know. But, yeah, it, it cleans up the engine bay quite a bit, actually. Uh, I do like the little gold here. I guess if you wanted to, you could paint the, the air cleaner gold, but I'm going to keep that black. Um, Eventually, I'll get down to pulling the engine and uh, refreshing it and painting it, but for now, it looks pretty good. Um, the more I do it, the more I'm thinking, like, maybe I should have painted this slave cylinder, or the master cylinder, black. Um, but, I guess we'll see. I don't know, let me know, should I, should I have painted this black? Still debating, but... Uh, if it is black, it would get scratched up <laughs> when I'm putting those clips on, that's for sure. So on the inside, there's not really much to show you, but yes, I did take the seat out to pull the booster out. Um, I got two bolts in, and then I got the pin in, and I'm not doing the other two bolts yet because I want to make sure the brake pedal is adjusted properly since the rod that the booster connects to the pedal can thread and thread out for more pedal feel or less pedal feel like it's basically adjusting how much pedal travel you have before the brakes actually start working and right now I have no way to tell because um, I don't have brake fluid in it to push anything um, so I'm leaving it loose just in case I need to come out and pull the booster off and readjust it again um, but yeah I also had to adjust the brake switch because when I was fighting to get the pin out, uh, I whacked the switch out more, so I had to unplug it and thread it back into a reasonable position. <laughs> My brake lights were on uh, for like an hour and I didn't even realize because of that. Yeah, that's going to be it for this. Well, we got everything done that I can. So next up is 
Uh, I guess actually I could gravity bleed the brakes or I could use my Mighty Vac. I mean, I have a Mighty Vac. I have it right here. I could bleed the brakes myself, but uh, I think I'm going to just call it here. Uh, in two weeks, I'll have uh, my fiance out here and I'll put her to work to help me bleed the brakes. Um, but until then, that's it. So thank you for watching, and um, hopefully when when she's here and the brakes are bled, we can take this for a quick little test drive before I put it back on jack stands and I get back to working on it.